We all know Raspberry Pi 500, a compact, all-in-one computer built into a keyboard. It packs the same next-generation silicon as the Raspberry Pi 5 and was originally released on December 9, 2024. In September 2025, this keyboard computer received an impressive upgrade debuting as Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, bringing enhanced performance, expanded memory, and improved storage options. Hello everyone, welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hariharna. Are you excited to discover the latest features of Raspberry Pi 500? I'm just as thrilled to share them with you. So let's dive in and explore what makes this keyboard computer truly impressive. Let's first observe the external looks and understand what has changed. In the first look, we can see the keyboard is now featuring the new tactile mechanical keys. This new Pi 500 Plus is featuring Gateron Blue KS33 low profile switches coupled with smooth ergonomic low profile keycaps to make for a comfortable and smooth typing experience. Another interesting look upgrade is that keyboard keys are set above bright, crisp, and programmable LEDs. They come with six preset patterns which can be fully customizable and even provides the capability to individually program each LED according to your project needs. Next, we'll look into the most important upgrade specifications of Raspberry Pi 500, that is the performance upgrades. Pi 500 Plus now comes with 16 GB of RAM, making it ideal for handling multiple tasks and running demanding applications in parallel. This expanded memory also provides extra headroom for developers and power users who need smoother multitasking and more intensive workloads such as coding, media, editing or running virtual machines. Pi 500 also includes an inbuilt 256GB NVMe SSD, which is a significant upgrade over previous versions, providing dramatically faster boot times quicker data transfers, and ample space for apps and projects. And you also get a pre-installed Raspberry Pi OS as a bonus, making our task easier to get started with Pi 500 very quickly. Pi 500 Plus provides support for M2 NVMe SSDs up to 2280 form factor, allowing users to install high-capacity, high-speed storage for even greater flexibility and performance. And additionally, it also includes micro SD card slot for operating system installation or additional data storage, giving users the option to boot from a card or use it as a convenient expandable memory alongside NVMe SSD. Now let's look into the full specifications. So other than these specifications, all the remaining specifications are similar to Pi 500, but still I'll go through each of them. So the dimensions might have changed a little bit because of the new keyboard and the processor is same as previous version that is 2.4 gigahertz quad core 64 bit ARM Cortex A76 CPU. And the memory right now is an upgraded one that is 16 GB. And the connectivity we can see it has dual band that is 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 with BLE. It also has gigabit Ethernet. It features two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port. And we also have similar to Raspberry Pi 5 40 pin GPIO header. And additionally, this supports two micro HDMI ports similar to Pi 500, which means it supports up to dual 4K displays. And coming to the storage, as previously discussed, it is now coming with pre-installed 256 GB SSD and also the OS as a pre-installation. And also it features micro SD card slot. And the keyboard, based on different regional variants, you will get 84, 85 or 88 keys, which are mechanical and with the Gateron Blue KS33 low profile switches. And this can be powered on with 5 volt DC with USB Type-C connector. 
and operating temperature is 0 degree to 50 degree Celsius. Let's now power on the Pi 500 Plus. I have connected micro HDMI to HDMI display and also connected a mouse and 5 volt USB type C power supply to the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus. You can now see it is powering on and trying to boot from NVMe that is our SSD drive. We can now see the welcome screen of Pi desktop. Now it is asking to perform some initial configurations. So we can now connect a wired or wireless mouse to it. If you are using wireless mouse then you need to restart the Pi 500 by disconnecting and connecting the power supply. Then I click on next to set the country, language and time zone. Then I will click on next. Now create a username and password that you can remember and click on next. After that select your Wi-Fi and provide the password to continue. Now it is asking to choose the default browser and tick here to uninstall the other unused browser. So I will take that and click on next. Now it is asking to update the pre-installed software. It would nearly take 30 to 40 minutes based on your Wi-Fi speed. If you wish to spare that time, you can click on next, else you can click on skip. I have clicked on next to update. So it is first downloading and installing the libraries. I have fast forwarded this for the sake of this video. Now you can see the system is up to date and in the next step it will restart the Pi 500 plus and it will open the desktop. First thing I will do is, I will go to preferences, click on Raspberry Pi configuration and under interfaces, I will enable SSH and VNC for remote connection. Next, I will turn on the Raspberry Pi connect from the top right corner by clicking turn on Raspberry Pi connect. It will then ask me to sign in to Raspberry Pi connect portal. I will give the username and password and then it will ask me to add this device to my portal. And now we can log on to our laptop and remotely connect the Pi 500 plus. So now as I have enabled the Raspberry Pi connect in my Pi 500 plus, in my laptop I am going to sign in to the Raspberry Pi connect. And here I can see find it plus which is online. So I can connect it via screen sharing. Now that I can see the screen of Raspberry Pi 500 plus. Now I'll also try to use the remote shell. Yes, so I can even see the remote shell also working. And additionally, this board will remain in production until at least 2030 so that you don't have to worry and this makes it reliable choice for both home and educational setups. So we can explore powerful computing in a compact all-in-one keyboard that is Raspberry Pi 500 plus. And that's it for today's video. If you found this video informative, please type helpful and smash that like button. You can watch more tutorials on Raspberry Pi from this playlist. Your support means a lot to us and helps us keep creating more content like this. So please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you for watching and I will see you in another interesting video.